Hey everyone, CJF Hotshot here, and yes, I'm back on YouTube. I know I took a break, yada yada yada. Expect more from me, you know. Uh, expect more breaks from me because I, I'm inconsistent as hell. Just deal with it. But I am back uh, with a new video idea and concept. Uh, I made a flash artist tier list the other day on Twitter, and not only did I miss out some artists on it, um, I was also I also figured out I should probably give my reasons why. I've put the artists in their tiers, so that's what I'm doing today. Um, we're going through this chronologically so I don't miss artists this time. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to start with the, the assortment of Golden, Silver Age, and Bronze Age art artists. Everyone from Harry Lampert to Carmine Infantino to Dick Giordano to Ross Andrew, etc., etc., they're all in the same tier. They're all good artists, right? Like, it was the Silver and Bronze Age. There was a house style at DC. Like, they had, like, a certain quota to fulfill. There was no bad art, at least in the Flash, throughout the Silver and Bronze Age. There's nothing that really stuck out, either. Um, well, she could say, well, Carmine Infantino is the best because he created Barry Allen. Harry, Lam Harry Lampert's the best because he created Jay Garrick. It doesn't matter too much to me because I my opinion works on what do I like about their art and the best I can really say is that it's good and it's from the silver and bronze age so well, gold and silver and bronze age so to me it just it's aged and it's not their fault however I can't put them above good and I can't put them below good so they're in firm good similar thing to George Perez only I would knock George Perez just a little bit above them all if nothing else, because he can put so many fucking characters on a page. I know he t doesn't technically count as a Flash artist, because he did Crisis on Infinite Earths. However, uh, this was the start of the DC Universe, and if any character in that book had the most change, it was the Flash mytho. So I just thought, yeah, fuck it. Uh, Crisis is on here, and George Perez is spectacular. But spectacular in the sense of how good he is. However... Uh, he's also, his stories, he's it, he just, he did back in the day are oh, so long. They're just so long. Um, uh, like writers go crazy because they realize that they have to fill more dialogue in just to make, make sure that George Perez's vision is seen. So, yeah, that's why they're slightly above, but they're above all the golden, silver, and bronze age artists. But the late great George Perez is still, inherently ain't good i like his art style and i like how many characters he fits on the page just it can be annoying to read some of his books sometimes so now we get into the 80s and the 90s um starting with jackson geis and mike collins um when i made put made this tier list i kind of noticed that I downloaded images from like similar poses and I just realized I can't tell these two artists apart. <laughs> See, they're in good tier. They're a little lower than Carmine and Harry Lamper and Dick Giordano only because this was the 80s and artists were like branching out. Like at this point, we had the Neil Adamses, the George Perez's, and the John Burns who redefined uh, what it meant to draw comics. And of course, we had, like, The Dark Knight Returns, Frank Miller's Daredevil, which, like, really put a light on how art, how comic art can be made. And going, and knowing The Flash just stayed kind of simple and classical kind of leaves them a little short, especially since I can't think of anything noteworthy about Geis and Mike Collins other than some of the proportions can be a little lanky at some points and that I can't tell them apart. Like, they weren't unique. This was still house style. So, yeah. However, from here on, uh, we get more diversity in artists at DC, especially for The Flash. Um, starting in the Loeb's run of The Flash and continuing all the way through the early Mark Gateway era, we've got Greg LaRoque. Greg LaRoque is a legend. He was on The Flash for years, throughout the late 80s and early 90s, and he killed it. His style evolved, and he even created Wally's Flash suit and made all these iconic images for the flash and some of the ones that like stand out most to me when i think of the flash uh the you're no barry allen the nobody dies it's a rule 
the all the born to run moments where Wally's chasing the storm, everything. That was all Greg LaRoque. Yeah, so I put him in spectacular because his poses can be striking. And oh, yeah, I love Greg LaRoque. But you know who I like more than Greg LaRoque? It was a man who came just after LaRoque. Um, Mike, the late great Mike Waringo. Mike Waringo is such an amazing artist, and it's a shame that we lost him in 2007. Um, he just, his art is just terrific. You know, how we imagine in a Flash animated series, and you're probably thinking something that looks like Mike Waringo's Flash art, you know? It's bold, it's daring, it looked like classic DCAU shows at the time. And the color, colors were just evolving at the same time, too. And even though his early years were on the Flash books, we did get a few weird moments. I can't put him anywhere above top tier. I can't put him anywhere below top tier because Mike Ringo's art is kind of what got me into comics in the first place, like fully in, you know? And I have to respect him for that, especially because I just love his art so much. Next, we've got Salvador La Roca, uh, drew Flash Terminal Velocity, which is my favourite Flash story of all time, which you'd think put, would put him into the top two tiers, either top-notch or spectacular, but he's just in good. I don't, I don't know what to say. You, you know, Salvador La Roca drew some great images, but at the same time, it kind of looks a little stilted sometimes. And ultimately, the moments I think of for Terminal Velocity throughout later in the arc and LaRocca just didn't do the later parts they they only did the earlier parts and the um middle parts which I still love as a story like oh my god that was masterclass storytelling however if there was one part of that arc that I'd say could have been a little better it would be the art throughout the start and the middle but it's still really good though like it doesn't like affect the arc at all for me and my enjoyment Next, however, we've got Oscar Jimenez, who took over the book during Terminal Velocity and in throughout the next few issues until Dead Heat and The Race Against Time. And he's in Spectacular. It was so, it was so different from anything Mike Ringo had done and anything that Greg LaRocque had done. And it was also, Oscar Jimenez was the one who like created the lightning power, the lightning uh, symbolism for the Flash. Like, we've of course like seen it before. However, uh, Oscar Jimenez was the first one to like fully like draw it on the suit. And because of course this is after like the power increase during Terminal Velocity. And it was just so cool. And yeah, Oscar Jimenez just gets the edge for that, if nothing else. Um... Next artist we've got to go through is Paul Ryan. Paul R Paul Ryan was um, a good artist. He was he's not my favorite artist. He is he is quite near the top of good because like because when Wade did an interview, he said we had to pick between Paul Ryan and another artist. And whilst the other artist was a lot a lot more like drew a lot more like the nineties artists at the time. Um, Mark specific Mark and Brian specifically wanted Paul Ryan so they can like structure the story a bit better. Um, and Paul Ryan did do just that, and he was spectacular. So yeah, and Paul Ryan was even on the book for a bit uh, when Grant Morrison and Mark Millar took over until they got a new artist for the book. Um, they had a filler artist for two issues, and then they finally brought in. Um, Pop Man. Pop Man is the first artist I've put in terrible. I don't like Pop Man's flash art. Like, sure, it was okay ish in the Black Flash arc. However, it was also really proportioned. And Pop Man is like the first artist to return in the 21st century. And oh my god, it got so much worse there. Like, it was just, the life in the art just kind of sucked out of it. And the only thing that you have left is high fi Howard Porter colours. And when you see high fi Howard Porter co colours, you just think, man, wouldn't it have been better if Howard Porter drew this instead? So yeah, I'm not a big fan of Pop Man. 
Um, however, when Wade and Augustine came back to the book, they put on uh, Paul Pelletier. Paul Pelletier was a great artist. Um, he drew the Flash throughout Chain Lightning and the Dark Flash saga, and he did a great job. <laughs> however, I've only put him in good, because a lot of his success is dependent on the colorist. If you look back at the Flash Green Lantern crossover, um, that was a Flash Green Lantern Green Arrow crossover when they went to Alaska. Uh, Paul Pelletier did the art. It was either on the Green Lantern or Green Arrow issue. Um, but it was a lot more jagged because of the colours. And I'm just like, yeah. It just, it, I think it's a testament to how Tom McCraw like colours. At the same time, it is a bit, it is a bit mad. Um, another artist that I've put in good, however, I only realised I didn't put on the tier list on Twitter is Ron Lim. Ron Lim did a few fill-in issues of the Flash here and there. However, he's important enough because he did them whilst he did them so sporadically. He showed up a surprising amount throughout throughout uh, Mark Waite's and Brian Augustine's tenure on the Flash. So I'm putting him in retroactively. He's still in good, obviously, because I like his art. But when he drew the issue um, just before Jeff Johns' run, it was <laughs> it was a little lackluster, you know? It wasn't... Like, you could see the story. However, it was definitely a fill-in story uh, whilst, by, written by Pat McGreal whilst they were getting the new creative team ready. So, yeah, that's where we're leaving off for now. Um, next time we'll talk... But, but next time in part two we will talk about the rest of the artists that i've put in the tier list um and a lot more that i haven't that i'll put in retroactively even though they won't be on the image of the tier list because i'm lazy as shit all right see you later people